Road Trip 2021, and it is day two and stop four on a beautiful Tuesday in Eaton, Colorado. And here we go, continuing with a great tour of onions. We're going to learn all about onions right here at Fagger Burger in Eaton, Colorado. Chef Justin Brunson's here with us. Good to see you. We got Colby here as well. Ryan, Amber Strohauer, hey. Carly Smith, the fairy gut mother, and Brian Freeman, the farm whisperer. Where do we begin with onions? Talk about Fagger Burger. Well, I mean, uh, what would you like to know? We can uh, Just begin talk with about a, this kind of a company, tour on how we. This is a family business. It's a, yeah, it's a family business. Uh, we are uh, fifth generation. Ag. Five generations. That's right. Wow, wow. that's over a yeah. hundred years if I do my math right. It is. Yeah. So Centennial Farm. Uh, right. Yep. My uh, ancestors came over from Sweden in the late 1800s, and they began farming in this in this area, and we just kind of. Never stopped. Man, that's fantastic. Did, was it onions that started out with? It wasn't onions initially. I think it was probably sugar beets. Um, but we started, my grandpa started farming onions um, in the 40s. In the so, 40s? In the 40s. So it's been, you know, 70 plus years. It must have made sense on paper. And you start to really understand the land that you're working with as well, right? Right. Um, the business environment changed. And so we, initially back then, he didn't sell to retail stores or restaurants. Um, I think it was more of a co-op. And then my dad, he began um, turning to retail business, uh -huh. probably in the 80s, I would say. Wow, mm -hmm. holy cow. Did, do you think those guys ever thought it would turn into this? No, probably not. <laughs> we've, uh, we've had to add on to the, to the shed quite a bit. So hey, Ryan, how many tons are you producing in this place? Oh, geez. You know, it's kind of, it's hard to say because we don't ne necessarily think in tons. Um, Are you measuring it by loads? Or yeah, it's maybe semi loads. It's How many semis? A couple, about 2,000 a year is what we move out of here. 2,000 a year, folks. Yeah. And so just so people at home know, minimum of 40,000 pounds usually on a semi load. Typically. So if you yeah. like think about the 2,000 times 40,000, I'm coming up somewhere in the like 800,000. That's a lot of onions. That's some onions. So obviously not for personal use. You do a lot of business <laughs> there. Amber, how do you know these guys and what's the tie-in? Because Northern I Colorado. I mean, Weld County tie. Farmers Unite. That's, <laughs> that's the tie-in. Um, no, you, I mean, you, again, kind of like when we were talking earlier, you guys have been growing in this area specifically mm -hmm. and you've stayed in this area. I think that's super cool and honestly really unique. You just don't see that in ag. I mean, five generations, they're in the same fields. Like that's history, that's blood in the ground. I love, we're gonna tour this facility. I think Jay already yeah. took off and is doing that for sure. Let's Carly, do it. Chef Where's Brunson, you got onions. I mean, it's a staple yes. of cooking, right? It's great for gut health too. We yeah. have to talk about that. Gut health, yes. It is, so it's antimicrobial, it. it's antifungal. So it helps to create that healthy balance of bacteria and fungi, Brian. You were just talking about how you, if you have garlic and onions every day, that you can tell your immune system is tip top shape. Yep, so, that is yes. the truth. Yes. So Ryan, Brian asked you beforehand, he's like, you got all three. When you say onions and you say all three, what are sure. the all three? Yellow, reds, and whites. Yep. Love pretty, them all. pretty easy. Now, could like you it. do more, or if you just narrowed it down, it's like, okay, well, let's stay in our lane. We can do onion. We don't need to do garlic. We don't need. Yeah, to do it's you know, and then you start doing a different, um, different equipment that you need on the farm. So, you know, so for example, different planters, harvesters, just try to try to stay in our lane, like you say. All right, call the shots, and Colby, you do play by play too. All right, your color, up here. your color, oh. color analyst, and you're going to do the play by play. But just take us through this wonderful facility. And it looks like you guys don't cut any corners at all. This is a no. very well maintained and looks pretty high tech too. All four onions. What? Talk about this. Well, yeah. Hi, I'm Amber with Strohauer Farms. And I'm just here to remind you that the best potatoes are grown here in Colorado. Goodness elevated. Thanks for watching the Modern Eater Show.
Hey, Zach Kreider here, Colorado Mills Sunflower Products out of Lamar, Colorado, your only local source grown from a local crop to produce a local oil for local chefs. You can find it at Shamrock Foods, What Chefs Want, Seattle Fish Company. Uh, let me try it one more time, then we'll see. Hey, restaurants, we're glad you're reopening from Colorado Mills Sunflower Oil. We'll see you soon. <laughs> First, we partner with the best farmers in the world, and then we tell them, we will take it all. Process whole spices daily, blend custom spices to order, keep it fresh, safe, and flavorful, all so that you can get back to doing what you do best. So whether you're a restaurant, a food manufacturer, or an at-home cook, be sure to visit The Spice Guy at www.thespiceguyco.com. Hey Modern Eater fans, I'm Don Trobo with The Annex by Ardent Mills, and I just wanted to give you a heads up about some of the great things we've got going on locally in the state. We're headquartered right here, and we're working with farmers in the San Luis Valley to bring you amazing Colorado quinoa. It's just like the South American stuff, but grown locally. We've got transitional wheat flour that's grown by farmers in Colorado and surrounding states who are in the process of, of turning their fields into organic. So we're taking that transitional wheat and turning into flour, and now it's available for you to cook and bake with. And last but not least, we're now cleaning grain berries in Denver. So things like spelt or wheat berries uh, or pearl barley, those are things that we're now doing right here locally and are available to you. Can't wait to share it with you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jeff Nations from Aspen Baking Company. It's really important right now to support local. That's why I support the Modern Eater. Now, back to the show. So this is where we either, this is where the, the sorting and sizing process begins. So we either have our trucks back in right here and we unload them that way. Um, and then we just have a few people in this area sorting them out, throwing out the bad ones. Um, what makes a bad one? Well, it could be, it could be decay, okay. um, shape. It could lack skin. Um, what do you think? Anything else that I'm... Discoloration? Yeah. Nick from an implement? A What's tool? That? Nick from an implement sure. or something like, like a mechanical damage. Yeah, mechanical damage. damage. Uh -huh. How about just or look at warmed you up funny? a little. Like quit looking at me like yeah, that. Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, uh, truly, so the sorting, that's an important thing because right off the bat, that's going to, is it going to make the cut through the rest of our Sure, facility? sure. Um, so we do that here. Another way that we, that we unload the onions is through bins uh -huh. that we use, these big plastic bins and and we use those for storage because they allow us to um, create more ventilation to the uh -huh. onion, so they cure at a different rate. Mm -hmm. um, Trivia time, let's ask Brian. So planting and harvesting, when Brian? Oh gosh, you're gonna be planting, well you're gonna start in a greenhouse mo most likely, right, in, in probably March. Well, Is so we have two different ways that we plant. Uh -huh. We have set onions, uh -huh. and similar to what you're describing, they're started they start in um, west of Phoenix, about. Mm -hmm. So they migrate. Yeah. They come north. <laughs> That's interesting. I, hey, uh, that I got a question, idea. though. Do you guys do sweets? That was one other I didn't ask. We do. Yeah. And those are produced from those uh, set onions that we, Colby was just alluding to. Um, nice. For so whatever getting... reason, those typically have a, just a lower pungency than seeded onions. Mm -hmm. um, the split is probably maybe 20% set onions. Okay. Okay. It seems to be evolving due to labor. Well, let me ask yes. you, is a set though, That's it's not gonna store as well, right? Because right. Swedes, right. Swedes don't store like your typical yellows that you, you'll have. I mean, like we were saying, there's still a little bit of a handful of onions left from last year's crop not good, not bad, but that's usually how onions will last you. Let's see, that, you guys are in a field where a lot of people don't recognize that, I think. You, you get one <laughs> harvest, and that lasts you until next season. Um, similar to like apples or potatoes, where you don't have multiple harvest right here. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. And so we have set onions and then seeded onions, and the seeded we can store into the spring of the following year. And then the set onions, we typically um, store those in those plastic bins mm -hmm. because they do get that ventilation and it can extend the storage time. How, yeah. how long can an onion last, like the end consumer? Because I have some onions in my uh, oh, spice cabinet for a while. Yeah, it's a pen, you know, probably, I don't know, potentially 
six to eight months, yeah. I would say. Here's what the consumer wants to know. Can you eat it, which I, I have my own personal opinion. You can. Can you eat it when it's growing already or would you just throw it away? Hey. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is Brother Luck from Lucky Dumpling, for by Brother Luck in Colorado Springs, and I am rocking with the modern eater. You're watching them, you're tasting them, you're knowing everything there is to know about Colorado. <laughs> Hi, Charlie from Brews Beers here. Our new Belgian Abbey Four Pack is a mixed package of the four core beers made in Abbey and Trappist breweries in Belgium. So we have a single, a double, a triple, and a quadruple in one package. Now, quadruples are the emperors of Belgian monastery ales. They're dark in color uh, with a dense tan head and alcohol ranging from 8 to 12%. So they're pretty strong. Quadruples are very rich and complex with big maltiness, uh, spice, and flavors of raisins, cherries, and plums. Alcohol is apparent in the mouthfeel, but not overwhelming. Uh, even at 10.5% ABV. So the finish is long, complex, and dry, and they're great beers anytime, by themselves or with hearty foods. Pick up your Abbey Four Pack at either Brews location, 67th and Pecos, or at Colfax in York, and at fine liquor stores throughout the Denver metro area. Take home some Belgian-style badassery today. the outtake version. <laughs> What's up, Denver? I am Chef Natasha Hess, and this is Chef Carrie Baird, and we are at the Ginger Pig. Check us out, gingerpig.com. You can also see us on the moderneater.com. Thanks, everybody. It's cornstarch. I know. It's cool. Here's what the consumer wants to know. Can you eat it? Which I, I have my own personal opinion. You can. Can you eat it when it's growing already, or would you just throw it away? Well, I, yeah, I think you can eat it. Maybe you cut off the part that's growing, yeah. but no, other I than that, you should be right. To talk about eating them sprouted. Because yeah. I think people think when potatoes and onions sprout that they have gone bad. Sure, right. yeah. I mean, it's just the one, one portion of it is bad. So like you say, you can cut away that part right. and then it should be fine. I always Almost. say they want Mother Nature. If they want to go buy some more onions, yeah. yeah. that's nice with me too. too man. I just, <laughs> and I mean, if you're cooking with it, like when you saute it up or whatever you're doing with it, that bitter taste in the sprout is mm -hmm. like nothing. So, right. Yep. Let's keep know. walking. And okay. Uh, I throw out just random thoughts in my head that I think people are wondering themselves when it comes to onions. Is there any way to make yourself not cry when you're cutting an onion? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you put I a think matchstick I'm, in I'm your sure. mouth. I think everybody's got Is that right? Weird, yes. Yeah. The Match sulfur stick? or something from the matchstick ah. is like what... Have you yes. seen someone sells glasses yes, like it was I in a William that. Sonoma or something? I'm like, come on. <laughs> You're a home chef. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> Who's got a random onion question before we get to the next station? Anybody? Random onion question? Can you? Well, no, here's a, good, a better question. Should you keep them next to a potato? Or can you? No. My vote is no. <laughs> now the offset gas is from onions. Uh, no, I mean, is that? It, it does make them sprout, the potatoes sprout a little sooner. Do they? Doesn't affect the onions. They're the <laughs> Sorry. stronger but, players. See, I yeah. would say from a storage, colder temperature on a potato than you want on an onion. I agree. I always kept my onions a little warmer, but dark. Same, yeah. both of them want dark, but I would, onions could go five degrees warmer. So you're moving things yeah. around on I a agree. Tuesday. Right. We're jumping in here. Sure. From, so they come. On the other side of the wall here, we have, uh, this is where we size them. So each onion gets, gets weighed. That's how we size it. Got it. So in that office there, the one, typically we have that, the computer set up in there. It's, we're remodeling that office, but um, yeah. So we, we designate a certain amount of lanes. Yeah. What are the weights? Well, it's whatever we decide that, that we want, want them to, to be. be. Yeah. So our warehouse manager, he determines the parameters of those weights yeah. and then sets the computer. And he might say lane one through 10 uh -huh. is for you know this size of onion. Gotcha. And uh, we can also program it to sticker certain sizes. Got it. Um, if so are these all one size over here? Are, is yeah. One size? Yeah, those would be mediums. 
Those are the mediums. Those right. Good size and so those, right those have been made into three pound bags and they put them in a larger bag and that's how we sell them. So if something doesn't make weight, then where does it go? Well, if it's underweight, it would have been thrown out prior to being here, hopefully. And, and what do you do with those then? Just they they go to the sheep farms and, you know, we have Again, I trash. feel like farm animals love produce. Yeah. yeah. I think people don't realize that, mm -hmm. that they, they'll they consume fruit, like all yeah. sorts Everything. of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it new? I, I was always, I, I grew up that onions were sized, not by weight, but by well, diameter. So that's, that's something that's new true. to me. It's just that we can, we found that we can get pretty accurate yeah. using the weight. Versus the diameter. Because yeah. then it takes yeah. away, it changes your optical sorter probably, or different, I mean, and your, your machines, because right. you're, you're putting them through the different sorter. Yep. And right. so this machine is from uh, New Zealand. I hate to think if it ever goes down, right? I mean, what do you do at that point? You got spare <laughs> parts in your back yeah, we, pocket? We, we have some, yeah. It's, yeah, it's we, not good when it does. Keep, we keep a lot of parts around, and luckily the, our, our warehouse manager is really well versed in this, so he can awesome. usually get everything repaired That's very perfect. quickly. Oh, yeah. Tell the truth, Colby. Do you like onions? This is Troy Guard from Tag Restaurant Group. You saw me playing a little air guitar. So good. And when I'm not rocking, I'm watching The Modern Eater, like you should be too. Hey, you guys. Jay here with The Modern Eater Show. Thanks for watching. Don't forget about our YouTube and Instagram channels. A lot of killer content over there. Throw us a subscribe on YouTube. Throw us a follow on Instagram. And thank you for supporting TME. We couldn't do this without our amazing sponsors, so let's check them out right now. Very proud to be part of the, the Modern Eater and uh, chefs, restaurant owners, any food service operators. You know, I know right now that uh, delivery and carry out is bigger than ever and we got you covered. Uh, Cambro uh, has a full line of uh, delivery and carry out items. More economical options are expanded polypropylene or EPP, a uh, nice insulated container. Uh, the ProCard Ultra is really versatile. It's a great unit because you can actually store cold products down here, hot products up here. It's all 120. There's no refrigeration worries. It's all thermodynamics. Just let us know what your food service challenges are, what it is we can do to help you out, and there isn't anything that we can't do for you. So uh, hope to see you over here in our facility in Park Hill soon and uh, stay safe out there. You know everybody, with several million dollars of hard assets here, insurance is very, very important to us. Ewing Levitt covers it all. Machinery, building, workman's comp. Ewing Levitt's got us covered from the floor to the ceiling, from our alley, even to the street. This divider, this press, my cooling conveyor, my oven. Ow, ow! Ewing Levitt covers our counter stacker and our employees too. If you need insurance, take it from Little Rich at Rockalitas. Call Ewing Levitt, they'll get you covered. Hey, this is Keegan from D-Bar in Denver. You guys might find it difficult to stay in touch and stay up to date with the ever-changing culinary scene in Colorado. It's almost impossible. Just tune in to the Modern Eater. These guys have their fingers on the pulse of what's happening in all of the food and beverage in all of Colorado. They're behind us. They understand the idea of shopping local and shopping small. To so support them, you support us. Tell yeah. the truth, Colby. Do you like onions? Uh, I don't. You don't like onions? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. that's, is that true? <laughs> that's really funny. That's this is news to me. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> you have you ever eaten yeah. an onion? Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't like onions. I will, I will eat them. They're not my favorite. <laughs> They're not. I know people that pick onions out of stuff, and then I'm the person that's like, more, the more onions that more you onions. could possibly <laughs> have, right? Yeah. The, the better, that's funny. but <laughs> that's the best thing we got all day. Yeah. <laughs> I, let's just cut. That's it, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's the onion commercial for you. So good, Kobe won't eat them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Thanks for asking that yeah. question. Yeah. Great endorsement there. Thanks for telling <laughs> At least you know <laughs> anything that comes out of this <laughs> man is truthful. <laughs> That's go. right. Yep. What else can I ask? You, <laughs> you like Ryan? <laughs> you like Ryan? No, no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Ryan? Well, I don't know. We can go out to the field. Let's we can do it. Yeah, okay. let's do it. I like that. That's fantastic. And voila, just like that. Here we are. We're in the field here in Eaton, Colorado at Fagerberg. It's a great day right now. Amber, thanks for introducing us to new friends. Definitely. I'm so glad you guys came out to Northern Colorado, Weld County specifically. We've hit, we'll hit 10 operations in this area when and it's all said and done. Keeping us going. Mm -hmm. Ryan and Colby here with us. We've got Jeff Justice Brunson, the Fairy Gut Mother, and of course the Farm Whisperer, Brian Freeman. <laughs> As we continue, okay, I mean, first blush here, right? This is beautiful. They're all rode out and a uh, little, but that's where they thrive. They were originally planted near Phoenix, and um, these are whites. And yeah, we have a weeding crew in the field today, and, and they're getting the field cleaned up. It's still, you know, it looks pretty good for the most part, not a lot of weeds. Let's walk and talk and take a look at it. Sure. So what do you look for? Well, right now, I mean, you're only just looking for weeds. That's sure. that's that's but all the weeding crew is doing. It, sure. Yourself, what are the things that are going through your head? Of going well, it seems like the, the heat's allowed this, look at this, this field this to, uh, yeah, we got to get rid of that. Well, that's probably the strongest oh, onion that it's lived past a tractor running over yeah true it's it, it, which we should research that one to a question ryan is heat and stress we talked to some grape farmers on the western slope and we'll be at a place like carboy and mm -hmm. and and these different wineries and they're all about stress that mm -hmm. grape as hard as you can because you get better flavor is there any of that in the onion world what do you think kobe uh you know a little little bit of uh heat stress is okay on them but you want to you want to definitely keep them wet i mean they're going to thrive uh, not being overly wet, you want just enough just enough moisture in the ground. Nice. nice. What's the water content in an onion? Just curious. What do you figure oh, makes man. up? Oh Not sure. That's a yeah. That's I, that's above I, our I, heads. That's I a, forget the number. I've heard it a hundred <laughs> times and I forgot it. Something. What what did you say? Something. Yeah. Like ninety five percent. Is is water content? Yeah. yeah. So more water the merrier then, right? I mean, you see these beautiful stands here, and like one thing Ryan and Colby battle more than anything in this area is hail. We you know we've been talking about, but with onions, it's very detrimental. Have you guys mm -hmm. had any recent storms that have seriously? Not not around this area, no. Yeah. Um, Stop talking like that. Either. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> next subject. We're in that people know. Like, we're battling Mother Nature, and that's the thing. Like. You invest so much in onions. He, you know, he just mentioned hand weeding today. I mean, you think about the cost that goes into this onion, and then at the very end, before it's harvested, you get a huge storm mm -hmm. that wipes it out. And it's just, that's the tough piece. You can do everything and have and one then, bad, boom. you know, 10 minutes, and it's just, season's well, gone. Done. Which breaks my heart when I hear those things. That's why farmers are crazy. Yeah. You know, they got to be so optimistic that they're kind of insane. Yeah. yeah. Really up. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, then, so. and then rain, too. You don't want rain because you need everything to set it in the ground. Never I seems mean, to right. be the perfect time. So it's always a reason to complain about something, it seems like. <laughs> <laughs> so over 100 years farming on, on this land particular? No, not not here in particular. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Actually, this we did own these farms here, and then we swapped the city of Thornton for gotcha. some farms further south of here. That was back 50, 40, 50 years ago. So fourth year for our farm tour and every year there's something different. Is this wet year or a dry year? Last year was pretty dry in particular, but you know, you, you face fires and I can see, I can't even see the mountains right now. I'm for sure there's probably a fire going on somewhere up in Wyoming, maybe. But um, you know your land well by now. Can you just kind of go into a season going, all right, I have the feeling. I know this overall feel of what's going to be going down this year. Are you still just taking it as, as far as weather? As every, weather. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. I would like to, but no. I mean, the short answer, it's just it's difficult to predict. We can, I guess there's certain variables that we can take into account. Like, for instance, this year's uh, transportation. We know trucking costs are going to be higher than normal, uh -huh. much higher than normal. Um, labor's gone up. There's a lot of different factors that we can kind of gauge what 
what direction they're trending in. And so as far as input costs changing due to those, uh -huh. sure, we can do that. But, you know, weather and, and events are just out of our hands. There's only so much you can do. Trucking is hard, though, do. because that, you were already under contract before right. you knew. Yeah. And so depending on whether you were going to deliver or you were making them FOB, right. you could I'm be seeing... on the hook for that. Is that a drone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Carly's. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Is that what it looks like? When That's you not your drone? I thought that was no. yours. I thought Stu was buying it. So colby has been pretty involved in setting up <laughs> sales beyond uh -huh. um, so for the following shipping season and they're starting to i feel like gravitate more toward location as far as where they get their product mm -hmm. because of trucking and and the issues that it's bringing up yeah it, uh, freight freight costs uh, in certain regions of the country have have doubled uh compared to this time last year so that makes makes projecting your future contracts really difficult mm -hmm. um so you're you're really hoping that you can, you know, grow a grow a good crop here and and not have to bring very much product in because the freight is going to kill you. And and we were talking about that earlier. Some people might not know. My name is Alex Seidel from Fruition Mercantile Fruition Farms in Chook. If you like vegetables as much as I do, make sure you tune into the Modern Eater. Modern Eater, we love you guys. This is Amber with Northern Colorado Potatoes, reminding everyone that potatoes grown here are truly rooted in love and rooted in a long history of being grown in this area. Early 1900s reports show that this was either the largest or one of the largest potato producing areas in the nation. Other states have had some amazing branding, but don't forget we have all your favorite varieties and more you love to cook and eat, including russet. Support local potatoes, you won't be disappointed. Hey guys, it's Caroline Glover. I'm the chef owner of Annette out at Stanley Marketplace. Citrus is about to be in its prime. And you're watching the Modern Eater Show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. And, and we were talking about that earlier. Some people might not know. As a farmer, when you have a contract with a big retailer, you have to have the onions when you say you're going to start your contract. And if you don't, you start getting dinged unless you, you, know, you have a great relationship and they can give you a little slack, right? And so you, a lot of times you'll have to bring stuff in just to fulfill contracts in the edges of your seasons? Or? Sure, yeah. I mean, and we have to, if we do run into some of these weather events or whatever it might be, then you have to figure out how do we prioritize our, some of these contracts. Yep. But at the end of the day, you do have to, you have to fill them all. You're yeah. right. So, because well, you can get off a little bit on the act of God if you've got the weather stuff. A little bit, but, but you try you try not to the, go there because yeah. in the the skews and the so when you're purchasing product at a retailer, they can only those cash cash registers can only have so many skews. Mm. So if let's just say you have Mother Nature affect you and you can't Fagerberg can't get their skew out, they're going to switch over to a competitor that the skew's already in the yep. system. Mm. And once that happens, mm -hmm. so it's... You open the it, door. Yeah, you, you really, I would say, you know, th there really isn't any room no. anymore. Yeah, yeah you right. can't. That's the biggest fear. When you, when you don't, you can't fill an order, somebody else can, can yep. and then that, that opens the door. And I, I would say the, the biggest portion of this is just honoring the commitment that you made. You know, they've, they've committed to you to buying the product from you. And vice versa, you know, you, you've agreed to supply that product, so you want to, 
you know, you just want to honor the commitment. I have oh, that to. Farmer, de- farmer integrity, man. Right. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I have to imagine you guys have pretty tight relationships that you've really worked hard with mm-hmm. to formulate over the years, for right. sure. Yep. So being such a great spokesperson for onions, Colby, <laughs> uh, I think you should be on the Onion Council. <laughs> I love onions. You should make him wear an I love sure. onion t-shirt yeah. forever. <laughs> I, do, I do love onions. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, what? Not, <laughs> Not in my belly. <laughs> the, how can people learn more about this operation if they choose to, and maybe even potentially doing business with you guys? Go through our distributors. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch up. I just wanted other people that are watching this right now, they say, hey, listen, I'd love to do business with you guys. What's the best way, through your distributors? Well, they could they could just call our office. I mean, okay. they're interested in, in buying, like, you know. Sure. Do you have a website? We have a website. Yeah, it's just, Fag- I think it's Fagberg Produce. Dot com. Yeah. yeah. But just onions, that's right, it. guys? Just it's onions. Just onions. Yep. That's, that's it. Nice. Talk to Colby. Yep. So, yeah, we ship. No so, it would start no the beginning of August when we're in season. We ship from the beginning of August through typically the middle of March. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's our normal shipping season. But we do ship year round. We bring in product, as you guys saw in the warehouse mm-hmm. now, from different areas of the country. Yeah. And we repack that. So, there are certain customers that we supply year-round and what i like with them you know you guys just growing up you become such an expert in your crop, you know and i think that sometimes that's missed in the call scene because we do have a lot of that's variety a great point. when you specialize you're going in i mean yeah if you need onions you go to fagerberg you know <laughs> i like, love I you love need that. potatoes you go to Grow House. that's right <laughs> duh any closing comments we are doing some organic this year um we're trying to expand our base there. The, uh, you know, the, uh, I would say the desire is not even close to conventional at this point. Yep. But, um, yeah, we'd, we'd like to get a little more involved in it. Nice. We do have subsurface drip irrigation uh, on our farms a little bit further south of here. We've got about 850 acres of it, um, and it is permanent. It's about eight inches deep in the ground, and the, the water savings, uh, fertilizer savings uh, are tremendous. It, it, Water is 40%, I think, yeah. isn't it, on that? A minimum, it is. Like it is, a minimum yeah. of 40% yep. to go to drip. And in a place like Colorado where we have water problems, that's the kind of stuff yeah. that you guys are sure. ahead of everybody else. Because, that's- I mean, that's thinking about the future. How do you conserve the water? And then how do you stretch the water shares that you have to irrigate more land? Right. So way to go. Way to go, man. Oh. Leading the industry. That's why they'll be around another hundred years and mm-hmm. counting. Again, the ModernEater.com has all of our tour stops. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thanks, for, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. <clears throat> so we're going to peel on out of here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, who else had one? <laughs> the Modern Eater Show continues.